Hi guys, uh, took a few days off from doing videos, one because it was the weekend, but two because it was my birthday and I took a couple of days off for my birthday. Um, some of you knew it was my birthday and you sent messages and that was very kind, thank you. Uh, and thank you in general if you're watching these videos and uh, a lot of you are commenting and I love that. Um, and, and sometimes comment sections can be such a contentious uh, nasty place and there has been none of that so thank you guys for uh, having this conversation with me I love hearing what your thoughts are uh, I um, I'm instructed and, and uh, pushed by your thoughts and I really appreciate that and if you um, appreciate this conversation and want to make sure it continues you can check out my patreon uh, it's, it's linked down below um, there are there are benefits to you joining the patreon at whatever level you join it at um, whatever benefit from these videos you may be getting uh, I like to think if you join the patreon it goes to the next level and you help make sure these videos remain free for people who are uh, finding them anyway enough of that uh, I want to tell you about uh, an experience I had uh, uh, encountering the daemon in the wild. Um, specifically, it was with uh, my nine-year-old son. My, my wife and I, we have a son, he's nine years old, and he is, he is all the great things that a nine-year-old is. He, he's silly, and he's energetic, and he's really super stinking creative. Um, and you know, he's he's into a lot of stuff. He's into uh, Disney Channel shows and and Pokemon. He's really into Pokemon, and and he has a couple of these Pokemon stuffies that he likes. Um, and he decided the other day that he was going to make a bed for one of them. And as far as I know, he didn't see this somewhere. He didn't see somebody else doing it. It was just an idea he had, which I thought was was great. I was like, yeah, okay, cool. So we took him to Michael's and he got some supplies to make this bed, some um, popsicle sticks and some cardboard and some felt. Um, and he came home and he started making the bed. And like I said, this wasn't something he saw somewhere. So he had an image in his mind of what this bed needed to be like. And so um, he starts making it and... Uh, his mom and I are reading or something while he's making it. And we're all in the same room. And all at once he gets to the stage where he's gluing the felt down. And um, something happens that he, th that it happened incorrectly. He didn't like the way it went. And he lost his shit. <laughs> like he freaked out. And, he, you know, he's nine years old, so he has emotional outbursts sometimes, but he this was really um, different from the ways he usually freaks out about stuff. He he got really upset. And and we, we talked to him about it. We're like, you know, what's going on? Why are you upset? And he's like, you know, it's I had, I had this picture in my head, and it's not, I couldn't get it. I couldn't make it do what I wanted it to do, and it's, it's ruined now. And he was really upset about that. And so his mom and I had a conversation with him about how when you try to make stuff, you have this perfect image in your head of what it's supposed to be like and what it's going to be like. And then we get our bodies involved with making it. And sometimes our bodies can't do the things they need to do to get to that perfect image in your head. And that's one of the great frustrations of art and being an artist and being a creator is like the image in your head isn't always what ends up getting created. And so you kind of have to make peace with that. Uh, you have to kind of realize, okay, uh, I have to practice every day. And if I practice every day, then eventually my body kind of gets to that place it needs to be so that it can create perfectly what's in my my head. Um, and um, that's really hard. Well, it's hard at any age. i um, 49 and very rarely do what I, does what I create look the way I want it to or accomplish what I want it to. But at nine years old, where you're still, your body is developing, your personality is developing, you're still becoming what you're supposed to be, that it's kind of really hard when you realize your imperfection at these things. Um, and I was thinking later about how, um, just his reaction and how upset he was. And I decided, you know, I think that was his daimon coming through. You know, the daimon is, if anything, it's causative. Like, it has... Um, it has a thing it wants to produce in the world or things uh, or produce in us. Like uh, it wants to express and it is uh, very 
narrow-minded and um, one-sided about the, what it's dedicated to. So um, it doesn't have a lot of patience sometimes with our, uh, with our inadequacies or our need for practice or our inability to achieve things. It just wants to see the thing created in the world that it wants to put out there. And so um, living with a daimon can be hard. Um, and, and, and for some of us, our daimon is really quiet and it doesn't interject itself very often and it doesn't uh, make itself uh, heard or make life hard on us because we haven't given it the room to. Our, our ego is so um, predominant and powerful that it kind of drowns it out. But when you're not in, your, your ego is still manifesting, so uh, it's easy for it to get overpowered by the daimon. But um, if you if you have an interaction with you, if you if you do interact with your diamond, if you, you do listen for it, you do make room for it. Sometimes you can come into conflict with it. Um, and um, I was listening to a, a video by a guy named Bernardo Castro. Uh, he was talking about the diamond. He talks about negotiating with it. Um, and I'm going to do a video about that, like how you negotiate with the diamond, what that looks like. Um, but uh, that's a skill we develop over time uh, where we kind of have to make it clear to the diamond that, you know, hey, I'll, I'll work on the stuff that you put it on my heart to work on, but it's not going to be perfect every time. Uh, and, and what you can't do is you can't judge yourself by that image of perfection. You can't, you are not um, this, uh, so, so the diamond represents this blueprint of everything you could be and that's it's not you it's not like you're moving towards that but you can't judge yourself in relation to I'm not there yet you have to judge yourself in relation to I'm better than I was yesterday um and um and that's a hard lesson uh at 49 or at nine um and so um uh, I'd love to hear your all's experiences with uh trying to create and trying to kind of make peace with the diamond and uh, its influence in your life. Um, and it, like I said, if you want to, if you want to go deeper on this conversation, check out my Patreon and uh, please uh, watch these videos, watch them to the end. Let's goose the algorithm however we can to get this uh, message out more. Um, I really think the world needs to start thinking about um, the diamond. It's really, it's really a conversation about purpose and meaning and um diamond is just a, a label that i stick on the can to have that conversation but anyway thank you guys see you soon